Good afternoon, everyone. I hope this uh, Thursday afternoon finds everyone doing well, and um, hopefully you're looking forward to um, the abbreviated spring break that uh, we have the next few days. I know from my perspective that certainly wasn't the way I thought our spring break would go. In fact, um, as we got through what I thought was the winter with no snow days, I was pretty excited that for the first time ever, uh, we might actually have a school year with no snow days. Uh, little did I know that our school year would um, <clears throat> turn out this way. So I just want to say hello and uh, I'm thinking of all of our students, our colleagues, and our families. And I just want to share a little bit of information with you and some encouragement with you uh, in this weekly update. So Today, it was officially announced that all Pennsylvania schools would remain closed for the remainder of the 2019-20 school year. While the news is not totally shocking to us, um, indeed, we've been preparing for that eventuality all along. It is, however, sobering, disappointing, and, and sad nonetheless. Um, thanks to our continuity of education plans, which we've been implementing, we are well poised to continue offering our distance learning opportunities through the traditional end of the school year in June. And I'm really proud of the innovative instruction being delivered by our teachers and proud of how the community has responded to ensure students continue to receive a quality education. And students, I'm really proud of you too for your commitment to attending and continuing to work hard. That shows um, a lot of character it shows the dedication that you have to education, and uh, that is greatly appreciated. And we recognize that distance learning cannot completely replicate, replicate our conventional schooling, and we all miss the personal interactions with our students. Uh, we miss seeing your faces in the hallways, hearing your voices, uh, getting to interact with you. And we also know that today's announcement impacts the traditional events such as our concerts in the spring, prom, the elementary reading parade, field day, spring sports, the commencement walk, field trips, and, and so much more. We share the disappointment being felt by our seniors who will not enjoy the culmination of their final year with us in the way that they expected and quite honestly, they deserve. We cannot replace these experiences, but we do not intend to let our seniors simply drift off. We will have a graduation the form of which is something yet to be finalized. Today's announcement affects us all differently and with a wide range of emotions. I want to encourage you and let you know there's no right way to feel, but I hope through this all we can continue to feel a strong sense of community. We may be apart, but we are in this together. And know that we know that everyone has a lot of questions right now. What ifs? What happens now? I wish I had all the answers for you. I don't. We have a lot of planning to do, a lot of work to do in the days ahead, but please know that we are committed as a school community and family to do the best we can for our students. We care about you deeply. We miss you terribly. Um, and we will do all that we can to provide the best education for you and the best uh, environment for you while we're apart. So let me end today with a story that some of you may be familiar with, but I think it is very appropriate and hopefully an encouragement and challenge for us all as we look at the situation in front of us. It's called Potatoes, Eggs, and Coffee Beans. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. I bet some of us could feel that way right now. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in a second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. And turning to her, his daughter, 
He asked, daughter, what do you see? I see potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touch the potatoes. She did and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what's this mean? she asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and coffee beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong and hard and unrelenting, but in boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which are you? He asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? And I ask that question of myself, and I challenge you to ask that question as well. What do I think? I think we have a community of coffee beans. I've seen it. I've seen it in our teachers and our staff. When the adversity comes their way and we're thrown into a whole new way of teaching and, and learning and supporting and coming out and making it good, good for our students. I see it in our students who, while there's a lot of disappointment and uncertainty and probably some fear and apprehension, are stepping up, are supporting one another with ideas. I've seen it in our seniors coming up with ideas of how they can still uh, stay connected in their senior year. I see it in our community through Coco Packs, partnering as we partner with them to provide meals to our families in Derry Township and stepping up to maybe change location and change places, but still providing for the needs. So I encourage us all to reach out, to ask for what we need, to be okay with our feelings and our emotions in this time of uncertainty, and to reach out when we need support from one another. We may be apart, friends, but we're not apart in spirit and in our hearts. I hope that this weekend you have time to relax, to unplug, to refresh, to enjoy the spring weather and the new life that it brings. We'll get through this together. And I believe like the coffee, the coffee bean, we'll make something of a good aroma. We'll make something very positive out of this. We've grown a lot. We've been stretched a lot. We'll continue to be stretched and grow a lot, but we will do it together. I'm proud to be the superintendent here in Derry Township. I'm proud of our community, of our students, of our teachers, our colleagues, our staff, our administrators, our board members. I'm just thankful to be where I am. And I hope you're thankful too. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the break and we'll see you next week.